It's really important in your essays to demonstrate why you're a good applicant for a graduate program in our field. But everybody is going to look a little bit different because everybody comes to the field with a different background. Some people will come with a lot of clinical experiences, and that's something they can highlight in their statement. Other people might have come with a strong research background, and that's something they can highlight. So everybody's statement is going to be different because everybody's uh, history in getting to the field and their background is different. What I like to see is your journey to communication sciences and disorders. So why do you want to be a speech language pathologist? Um, we want you to highlight your knowledge for and your passion for this amazing field of study and work. Your reviewers, the people who are reviewing your application, they're gonna see the whole thing at once. And you want that whole application to sort of make sense together. So if in your statement, you are talking about having um, detailed research experience and how that's been really transformative for you um, because you worked in somebody's lab, you should make sure that the person whose lab you worked in is one of the letter of recommendation writers and they can they have positive things to say about you. You know, you want to make sure that whatever you are saying in your statement, that you are supporting that in some way, both within your statement and potentially somewhere else in your application. In your essays, I like to see some evidence that you understand what the field is that you're applying to. Maybe you've had a volunteer experience or you've shadowed or a research position or another kind of internship or any kind of life experiences that have helped you understand more about what the field is like and why you're getting into it. A lot of students have had personal experiences with speech language pathologists, either themselves or a family member who has received services from an SLP. And that's great, but in itself, it doesn't really tell me that you know a lot about the field or that it doesn't explain why that's driven you to be a part of the field. So something that is, um, that's more than just saying that you received services yourself and therefore you want to also help people in that way. I'm much less interested in a chronology of how you got here um, and more so about your uh, suitability for speech language pathology. So there needs to be some depth there in terms of the experiences that you've had in your life that demonstrate your suitability for the field and particularly this program. Another thing that I'd like to know from your application is what are your career goals and how does this program help you to fulfill those goals? Where does this program fit in your life? Um, that shows me that you have a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, um, a sense of commitment to uh, your goals and this program will uh, help you to reach your goal. So often students will have a semester where there was some personal situation going on that impacted their ability to do as well in their courses as they normally do. And so it's helpful if the student acknowledges that explicitly instead of just hoping that nobody notices. Um, it also may be helpful for you to discuss within your personal statement, um, especially if there were extenuating circumstances or experiences, um, what you may have learned from those experiences or how you may have changed as a result of those experiences. You don't need to share with us information that you're uncomfortable sharing, but it's important for you to acknowledge what's on there and explain it to us because we will notice it. Um, sometimes this is a, a place to highlight experiences that you've had in your life that may explain um, how and why you arrived at our, our doorstep with your application um, and any um, sort of blips on your uh, record or periods of inactivity. Um, perhaps you um, started a family and for several years you um, were at home, for example. Um, these sorts of things may explain to us how your um, profile looks and comes together. But for the most part, this is, this is a place to, to give us any additional information that would round out the picture of your whole academic profile.
If you have something that you might think of as potentially a red flag, like a poor grade in a course um, that was due to some life event happening at a time or some other sort of situation, um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with mentioning it in some place. Many of the um, many schools will have sort of an optional essay where you can put this kind of information um, and that can be sort of a nice way to address that. You can also sort of figure out how to mention it sort of briefly. Sometimes it actually is helpful to have your letter of your recommendation writers sort of address any sort of weaknesses in your applications. So helping us understand why you performed in the way that you did, or it can be updating us um, between events. Maybe you did not um, do well the first time you applied to college and since then you've done certain things that strengthened your application and you want to uh, talk about that here. What I'm essentially looking for as a reviewer when I see a supplemental essay is growth and self-awareness. When you think about putting your resume together, it's good to think about whether the information that you think is important is really easy to find. I usually recommend that students will put both their overall GPA and also their major GPA um, in the education section. And that's because basically for everybody, the GPA in their major is higher than their GPA overall. So it's a great thing to highlight. Usually at the top we have education, so the institution and the uh, major and minor, and often we see the GPA listed there, um, and the years that you studied, followed by employment history or field relevant experiences, any uh, research uh, and service oriented opportunities. And you want to make sure that you have um, done a thorough check of grammar and, and editing to make sure that there are consistent um, formatting and, and grammatical decisions throughout. Another great thing to do is if you have access to a career center at your current school, or a lot of times if you've attended an undergraduate institution in the past, um, a lot of those schools as an alumni, you have access to their um, career services or their career center. That's a great place to attend resume writing workshops or sessions or even one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to make sure your resume or your CV showcases your qualifications for graduate study. So that's a great thing to take advantage of. Um, what I'm really looking for are, you know, what experiences has this person had that would maybe um, help to shape them to succeed in a graduate program. So, you know, sometimes those experiences are working in a restaurant or working um, in retail. You know, those are, those are experiences that teach you uh, patience. We truly want you to bring all of your diverse experiences uh, to the table um, so that we all can learn from each other. If we've all had the same experience, then um, presumably there's less to learn. And so I like to see um, a wide variety of experiences, but again, those experiences should speak to qualities that will uh, make you a good student and or SLP. First of all, I think that everybody looks for different things in applications, but I also don't look for the same thing across applications because everybody comes with a different background. So some people are career changers. They've been doing something else for five or 10 years and now they're coming back to school. Some people are coming from a different undergraduate major and they discovered speech language pathology at the end of their undergraduate career. Some people have been studying this since the first day they got into their undergraduate program. And so because of that, I don't think there's one thing that anybody should make sure they have in their application. Instead, what you really want to highlight in your application is why you're a good candidate for graduate school. So what sets you apart? Why are you going to end up being successful in the field and being an excellent clinician? It can be helpful to talk about um, something about maybe how in your coursework or your um, other experiences, they've enhanced your understanding of what it would be like to be an SLP and what you would actually be doing on a daily basis and how you would be serving people in that role. 
if I look across various parts of your application, they should be consistent in telling me that this person is ready for graduate school. This person has the skill sets that will make them successful. I want to see that this person, number one, has the academic and or clinical potential to be an SLP, but I also want to see that the student is self-aware, that the student understands how they learn, um, that the student has growth mentality. And, um, you know, it's okay to not have done well in a particular class um, or that you struggled a bit, but I'm more interested in what did you do as a result of that? How did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about yourself? What are you doing now? What are you doing to prevent those things from happening again? Um, Self-awareness is so important as a clinician. You're working with somebody who has a um, developmental um, language deficit or that maybe has an acquired language deficit and you're going to be working with them and you're going to be trying to help them. So we're I'm looking for somebody who's sort of ready to take on a role like that um, and you know ready to have that sort of bigger picture perspective on things so not somebody who's totally focused in one you know detail but who's really ready um, you know it's had a breadth of life experiences and is ready to sort of take on this career we're facing humans every day and working on quality of life whether that's for speech language voice swallowing um, audition so it is really uh, about the big picture. Are you ready for this fantastic field? Um, and are you prepared? And do you understand what, what you're getting into? It's about the, about your understanding and preparedness for the field and your maturity and commitment to working with people across the lifespan and across all of the areas of speech pathology.